This is a Squiz Kids podcast. Your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. Frogs that stay buried underground for years, creatures that can survive the vacuum of space and worms that live happily in boiling acid water. This is your Squiz Kids shortcut to the world's toughest animals. The podcast where we dive into the who, what, when, where, why and how of the big news stories. I'm Amanda Bauer. And I'm Bryce Corbett. Lately on Squiz Kids Today, we heard about godwits, birds that fly up to eight days non-stop. Mm. And that got me wondering about how the toughest animals in the world have adapted to their environments, the way the godwit adapted to be able to fly from Alaska, way up the top of our globe, down to New Zealand in the south. Today, we'll take you through what makes five of the world's animals so tough, how they got that way, and why we humans should care. Listen carefully, there's a squeeze at the end. What? Bryce, I wish we had 20 minutes for this podcast because <laughs> there are so many tough animals out there that I want to tell you about. I know. But I'm going to try to keep it quick and I'm going to cover my top five. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, at number five, we have my very least favourite, the cockroach. Ew. I suppose that's because they can survive a nuclear explosion, right? Well, actually, I did check that with Squizzy the News Hound and he told me it's a myth. Ah. But cockroaches are ridiculously tough. They can withstand 900 times their body weight. <laughs> So, Bryce, imagine if you weighed 40 kilos and someone put 36,000 kilos on your back wow. and you could survive it. That is amazing. No wonder they're so hard to kill. <laughs> exactly. All right, coming in at number four is the frogsicle. The what? All right, well, technically it's called the Alaskan wood frog, but bear with me. If you have a pet frog, you might know that their terrarium needs to be kept at around 25 degrees. Mm -hmm. But in Alaska, where these frogs live, it's lower than zero degrees, which is the freezing point of water, for seven months of the year. Ah. As temperatures start to drop in Alaska, our tough little wood frog begins to produce an incredible amount of wee. <laughs> and... Instead of going to the toilet, it mm. holds onto that wee in its blood and at the same time its liver begins pumping out more than ten times its usual amount of glucose, which is natural sugar. Nice. So that glucose mixes with the urine, which is the technical word for wee, and that whole concoction packs into a frog's cells and prevents wow. those cells from collapsing and dehydrating as the frog, wait for it, mm. freezes solid. No way! It freezes solid. Is that why it's called a frogsicle? Yeah, exactly. If you picked it up, it'd be frozen like an icicle. But wow. once spring is in the air, the frog thaws out, its heart restarts, and no. it hops away ready to live large for five months before starting that process all over again. Whoa, that is amazing. And it is tough. Now tell me, is there a tough summer animal? Well, yeah, for this one we get to head to Australia from Alaska and we're going to just check out another frog. Oh, I think good. frogs are amazing. Love frogs. So the eastern water-holding frog uses its hind legs like shovels mm. and it buries itself underground. Yeah. And it can create a bit of a cocoon and it can stay there for years mm -hmm. until it rains again and it can get water. Yeah. So there's a famous story of an Aboriginal community once saving the life of an early explorer who was dying of thirst mm -hmm. and they dug up these frogs yep. and gently squeezed them to release the stored water. Wow. But that's only something that Aboriginal people would do in an absolute emergency because unless the frog can replace the water quickly, it, it will die. Wow. So we've had cold, drought... What about heat? Well, for the toughest heat handler, it's hard to go past the Pompeii worm. Named, I guess, after the city that didn't survive the extreme heat of lava. 
Yeah, that's right. But these worms don't live in Italy. They're deep in the Pacific Ocean, oh. right beside superheated acidic water that's coming out of vents from the centre of the Earth. Oh, my gosh. How hot are we talking? 300 degrees. Whoa. Yeah, they stick their feathery heads up out of the tubes they live in to feed from uh-huh. slightly cooler water, and they have this sugary mucus that oozes out over their oh. backs. Yum. Yum, and that attracts <laughs> bacteria that feed on the mucus, and those bacteria also insulate the worm from the heat. So they basically are wearing a bacteria blanket. Wow, but uh, probably not the kind of blanket that I'd be wanting to keep me cool. No, no. Okay, so finally, Bryce, we are going to come yep. to the toughest creature of all, the practically mm-hmm. indestructible tardigrade. Tarda what? What's that? All right, they're tiny microscopic creatures and there are around 1,200 species of tardigrade on our planet. The ones that live on land survive drought by sort of shriveling up and they can survive that way for... 30 years. What? If they get wet again, they come right back to life. And when they're in that shriveled state, they can also survive temperatures as low as negative 272 degrees. My gosh. They can resist radiation and they can (laughs) even survive the vacuum of space. What? Indestructible. Is there anything that can kill them? Well, although they can survive heat of up to 150 degrees, Mm. that's only for a short period of time. So, Uh. strangely, Bryce, scientists say that climate change, which is a long, slow increase in temperature, might actually threaten tardigrades, these incredibly tough animals. Wow. Now, of course, animals are affected by the physical conditions of their environment, that's for sure. But I'm wondering, Amanda, how did these tough creatures get that way? How? Well, Bryce, all living things have adaptations that help them survive in their environment. Yeah, well, I know that if a person is adaptable, it means they're willing to change, a bit like being flexible. Yeah, so it's a bit different when we're talking about biology because animals don't and can't choose to adapt the way that you might make a choice to adapt when you agree to you know, watch the show your sister wants to watch on TV. <laughs> Animal adaptation is a process that takes place over generations. It's where an organism or a living thing slowly becomes better suited to its habitat. And... Here's a way to think about how it happens. So once upon a time, there were some giraffes that were randomly born with slightly longer necks. And it turns out that with a longer neck, those giraffes were able to reach more food, which meant that Mm -hmm. they were more likely to survive and they were more likely to reproduce or have babies. And then those babies also had longer necks and they were more likely to survive. And so slowly over generations, all giraffes ended up with long necks. That's called evolution. And all our tough animals have evolved to survive their extreme environments. In fact, there is a word for them extremophiles. Mm -hmm. So other than being extremely cool to learn about, why should humans care about extremophiles? Why? Bryce, there are lots of examples of scientists studying extremophiles adaptations and trying to learn from them to help humans too. So we're running out of time. Just give me one example. Okay, there's a lizard called the Gila Monster (laughs) that lives in the US and Mexico and it's one of only two species of lizard in the world that produces venom. It's cold-blooded, of course, so in the winter it buries itself underground and sort of shuts down to hibernate. And when it starts to get warm, it releases that venom into its body to wake everything up again. What? It poisons itself. Well, it sort of sounds like that with venom, but this venom is a kind of hormone that gets everything running properly. Scientists discovered that it was a lot like the human hormone that makes our bodies produce insulin. Uh That's what kicks in when we eat sugar. And they've now developed a drug to help people with diabetes who don't make enough insulin themselves. Wow. So there's an example of an extremophile being extremely helpful. Exactly. I (laughs) see what you did there. Time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What animal can withstand up to 900 times its body weight? 
That's right. It's a cockroach. <laughs> Question two. What two things does the frogsicle produce a lot of so it can freeze itself and survive? We and sugar. Or urine and glucose. <laughs> Question number three. What's the word for things that animals have evolved that allow them to survive in their environment? That's right, it's adaptation. Gave him a few hard ones this time, Bryce. A couple of toughies in there, that's right. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for joining us as we explored the who, what, how, where, when and why of the world's toughest animals. Now get out there and have a most extreme day. Over and out. Out.